actually go the other way. Yeah, we'll we'll go in the other direction. So we we noticed the um, really high cancellation rate was on page five at the end there, and it, I think what did you say seventy steps to schedule your colonoscopy? So um, I think that's a seems to be a huge issue. So we talked about. Um, mentioned earlier the order expires after 30 days and so we talked about just making that an open-ended order and whenever people are able to call or you know come back from being out of town or whatever it is they can make that appointment for themselves and then so that's your fix and then to measure it you could basically gather the same data after I don't know six months and see if you've made a difference in your cancellation rate great excellent great and we did that, we got them to change it to 90 days. Um, so that was a success and got the cancellation rate to go down, so, yeah. Uh, so for us, um, we were talking about this, this culture of screening um, and it being a new thing for a lot of people and actually instituting um, evidence-based screening uh, at primary care visits starting earlier um, than this point um, following USPSTF um, recommendations for screening earlier than age 50. Um, and so we would institute that and have a longitudinal form um, where we could basically check off um, that you have had this screening at this time. Um, it would be available to patients uh, on like a medical health record um, as well as to the physicians at that time. And so regardless of uh, what facility you had it in, you could check that you had it. Um, and the way we would measure if this were effective is by checking So what you're basically bringing up is the idea of a visit-based reminder, something during the visit that would say, be in the provider and the it sounds like the patient's face saying you're due for this. Um, and I didn't tell you this, but that was actually our baseline, that all this data is actually based on the fact that we already had a visit-based reminder system um, in place where the doctor um, or actually advanced practice providers got prompted um, that a patient was due. Um, um, but what we, what we didn't have, um, and we still don't have, but may come with the portal with Epic, um, is the patient being prompted. And I think that that's very powerful Powerful that we we all feel like we need to be prompted to remember to do these things but uh, we actually talked a while back about having sort of a part for the patient on our form where we had visit based reminders saying these are the ones for the patient and I think that's very powerful because there are going to be patients who don't have their uh, daughter calling them and saying you should get this right so they may not know it's appropriate so great excellent <coughs> Excellent. So it sounds like a, the, this letter and then a few different what we call process measures. So one, you could measure did the colon cancer rate screening go up, but there's some other things that, that you mentioned that are uh, ways of sort of looking at intermediate data to say, did this work? Calling patients, did they like it? Could they read it? Did they actually receive it? Um, and those are all really powerful things that I think take a project and really you don't have to wait until the big screening number goes up. You can call patients and they can say, this was a terrible letter, I couldn't read it, and you can change it and make it something better, right? So small tests of change. Great, excellent. Um, so we focused a little bit on the, um, the issue of scheduling. So once
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's another really great idea. All these are awesome ideas. And so, um, and we, we did that. We actually started piloting that. Um, and one of the, something in QI we talk about is balancing measures. Um, and so with that one, we had, we had sort of this question of, would we be able to maybe get more people scheduled, but maybe would more of them no-show or more of them cancel because they weren't quite they didn't have their calendar that day or they weren't quite ready. So that was something where we said, there's something we want to measure here. Does this get our screening rate higher? Does it cut out steps? But is there also a downside of this, of getting them scheduled at the front desk? Um, and so we, want, we, met, we looked at, at both of those things. And it actually turned out to be much more successful than we thought it was. We had actually sort of psyched ourselves out that this wouldn't be successful. Um, and, and it really, uh, really streamlined the process. And patients and our front desk liked it better, actually. Um, so so they were spending a whole lot of time tracking down those referrals afterwards, trying to get them scheduled. So great, excellent, that's great. I think the two main things that we talked about have already been mentioned. So one was the letter that they turned 50 for anybody who hasn't been screened yet, prompting them to come into the clinic and um, get just routine health screening, including colonoscopy at that time. And then the other one we talked about um, standardizing scheduling and making it easier for patients before they were the clinic. Awesome. All right, this group. So we also talked about scheduling in the clinic, which was similar. And then our other idea was possibly a handout. I'm sure patients get educational material about the importance of screening and all that, but um, very specific sort of step-by-step -step guidelines, like how to schedule your colonoscopy, one, two, three, you know, um, 24 hours before your colonoscopy. This is how you get your prescription for the prep. This is when you take it to try to eliminate um, just trying to eliminate some of their confusion. Mm -hmm. Of course, that assumes literacy and that assumes that you can read, you know, English or whatever language that, um, that we put it in. But and what would you measure to know that then, that was an improvement? And then I think two things we could look at. One, just asking patients similar to the letter if they felt like the way that we did the pamphlet was helpful and educational for them. Mm -hmm. And then also just see if you have a difference in your rates mm -hmm. of colonoscopy. Excellent. Well, thank you guys. Um, and um, so I'll tell you a little bit. I actually already told you about a few of the solutions that we tried, but I'm going to tell you about a few others. So we first, we tried two different outreach letters. Um, and one of them we called the Welcome to 50 letter, which was not as colorful as this. It was just a black and white letter. Um, and it said, dear Miss So-and-so, now you're 50. There are certain screenings that need to happen. Um, when you turn 50, um, please come in for a visit so we can talk about this. Um, um, and, and this, we went with sort of the root cause idea that, that of this visit-based approach problem, that we were only really doing this when people were in front of us, but that people were turning 50 all the time who were part of our patient population who we weren't doing anything about. Um, and so the other thing we sent was an options letter. So we actually sent a letter because we said, you know, some of our patients are actually pretty astute and high, high, liter high literacy and know a lot about these things. Um, so we sent out half of the patients a letter that said, um, you're 50 now, there are, are really good options for colon cancer, cancer screening. If you want a colonoscopy, call GI procedures yourself and set it up, because you can actually self-refer. Um, don't go through the whole step of us doing all these steps, just call them. Or here are some stool cards in the packet. Just do them and send them back to us. One or the other, you pick, OK? If you have questions, call us. Now, we sent these out centrally because we, we wanted something that was sort of low effort. Um, and so basically, we had a few exclusion criteria, but basically sent them out once a month um, to everyone turning this age. Um, and we sent them out sort of from the internal medicine clinic. It didn't, it didn't come from me or, um, or another doctor. And so, um, and so we then tried something else, um, which was you know there are plenty of other um, patients who are 60 who are just due for their second colonoscopy or, um, or you know or they're not in that sort of just turn 50 age group. And so this is one of those things that's like, just try it. So I took my panel of patients, and I got my list of patients who were due for colon cancer screening. Um, and I had 72 patients on the list. And I went through one by one, and I timed myself to see how long it took to see what's the burden of doing this. It took me an hour and 23 minutes. I had a template that I had written that was a, a slightly different letter that says, you're due for colon cancer screening. Uh, you're, I see that you're overdue. Please let's get you set up for this or um,